tonight on Size Eyes on the Skies. It is a pleasant evening here across central Iowa. We're taking a live look right now from I-35 at Clear Lake. You can see the sky is a little bit hazy. Temperature right now in Ames is currently sitting at 74 degrees right now. Winds out of the south and a dew point currently of 60. Coming up, we'll go into more detail on why it's so hazy and when our next chance of rain may come. Trey also has your national forecast. All that and much more as this Tuesday, September 15th edition of Size Eyes on the Skies starts now. Hi, from Studio 171 in Ames, Iowa, the Iowa State Meteorology Department team of meteorologists brings you the latest weather from around the country and out your front door. Iowa State's longest running television program and the only live weather broadcast on campus starts right now. This is Size Eyes on the Skies. Welcome back to Size Eyes on the Skies. Let's take a look now at your national forecast. We're going to start out tonight with a look at your current temperatures across the nation. You can see we've got a fairly wide range in temperatures. Our cooler readings are up across the northeast U.S. tonight. And then our hot readings, our temperatures that are still holding on to that summer heat across the desert southwest. Our hot spot right now, Phoenix, Arizona, currently sitting at 103 degrees. Let's take a look at the national satellite radar picture. We don't have a whole lot going on across most of the continental U.S this evening. High pressure is dominating much of the inner mountain west, the central U.S., and then into the northeast. But where we do have the active weather right now is across the southeast U.S. and then into the Gulf Coast states. That's where we've got tropical activity. Hurricane, he or Hurricane Sally is about to make landfall, and we will see that make landfall late tonight across parts of southwestern Alabama and the northwest uh, peninsula of Florida. So let's take a look now at our watches and warnings. We've got a couple areas of interest. At the beginning, I mentioned how much haze that we have in the air, how much haze and smoke that we have in the air across the upper Midwest. One of the reasons that we have all this haze and smoke is from those wildfires out across parts of the West Coast. We've got the smoke from those wildfires moving up into the atmosphere, and then the smoke gets blown to the east along the upper level pattern. The upper level flow is blowing that smoke to the east across the Rockies here into the uh, Midwest states. And so you can imagine if we've got hazy conditions here like this, very bad air quality across parts of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, California. That's what those air quality alerts represent right now. Then we head down to the southeast. We've got more active weather with Hurricane Sally that is coming ashore. You can see we've got several active alerts, flash flood watches, uh, tornado watches, and tropical storm and hurricane watches as well in place for parts of southeast Mississippi, southwest Alabama, and into the panhandle of Florida as we get into this evening. So let's take a closer look now as Sally gets some of the latest information that we have on this from the National Hurricane Center. Currently a Category 1 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. Uh, the minimum pressure is at 975 millibars, so that pressure has gone up a little bit since last night, so I don't think we're going to see too much more strengthening with that, but landfall is projected to occur as we get into the pre-dawn hours of Wednesday, and notice how slow it's moving. It's only moving to the north at 2 miles per hour, so flooding is going to be a big concern. You can see that stretch of heavy rainfall from the panhandle of Florida all the way up into parts of Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina, and we won't see any rainfall from that here across the upper Midwest because our pattern is pretty much going to be dominated by a ridge of high pressure. You can see as we step through time here over the next several days, we're going to continue to watch Sally down to the south, continue to produce widespread heavy rain and flooding, but across the rest of the nation, most of the weather that you're seeing right now, that is what you're going to stick with as we continue to see mainly dry conditions as high pressure continues to remain in control. You can see clearly here in the upper levels of the atmosphere, we don't see too much change in our pattern. A ridge of high pressure dominating much of the west and the central U.S., Northwest flow uh, locked across the Great Lakes states, but overall pretty much a stagnant pattern to round out the remainder of this week. High temperatures tomorrow are going to be in the 80s across much of the central and southern U.S., a little bit cooler over to the southeast where we've got the rain falling, cool, uh, seasonably cool across the northeast, and then our heat down into the desert southwest. Here's a look at my select city forecast for Kansas City. Really no precipitation over the next several days. High temperatures in the 80s and 70s. And very pleasant weekend for you folks coming up. That's a look at your national forecast. More size eyes coming up right after this. Thanks, Trey. Now it's time for tonight's weather story. 
On this date in 2007, unseasonably cool air spread across Iowa as temperatures fell below 40 degrees Fahrenheit statewide, and several areas experienced their earliest freeze on record. The, Iowa, the lowest reported temperatures included 30 degrees Fahrenheit at Guthrie Center, Pocahontas, and Waterloo, 29 at Cresco and Okidon, and 28 degrees Fahrenheit at Elkader and Spencer. Now here's Trey with a look at your Iowa forecast. Now it's time for tonight's trivia question. What happens if a Greek letter storm needs to be retired? A. The World Meteorological Organization skips that letter in future storms. B. The WMO give the storm a name after the fact and retire that name. C. They continue to use that letter as necessary, but make note of the letter in year it was retired. Or D. No one knows. We'll have your answer coming up, but now here's Trey with your Iowa forecast. All right, let's take a look at your central Iowa forecast. Now we're gonna start out with a look at our Iowa DOT camera at I-35 in Clear Lake this evening. You can see traffic moving along smoothly and skies are still pretty hazy, but very pleasant outside right now. Temperatures are in the 70s across most of the state. As we take a look at the current conditions right now in Ames, we are currently sitting at 74 degrees. Winds out of the south at around 10 miles per hour and dew points right around 60. So not incredibly moist and that is allowing our feels like temperature to really stay in close range with the actual air temperature. The headlines for this week here across central Iowa, really no impact for weather to speak of. A cold front will come through as we get into the day tomorrow. That will bring temperatures down just a couple degrees for the latter part of this week. But overall, remaining generally dry, and we don't see any rain chances at least until we get into early next week. Right now, temperatures are generally in the 70s across most of the state this evening. Very pleasant evening, dry air, and winds out of the south around 5 to 10. 10 miles per hour. The National Satellite and Radar picture right now showing most of the active weather associated with Hurricane Sally down to the Gulf Coast states. But meanwhile, here across the Midwest and much of the West, we are dominated here by this high pressure system. And that is going to keep us pretty much dry as we get through the next several days. The satellite and radar picture a little bit closer to home, really not too much going on. Uh, no cloud cover to really speak up, just that haze in the air. Here's a look at your future cast. As we get through the day tomorrow, we're going to see a few clouds come in from the north as that cold front will arrive as we get into the early to mid-afternoon hours tomorrow. So we're going to warm up pretty quickly in advance of that cold front. And then as the cold front comes through, our winds will shift to the north. And we may see a few clouds with that frontal passage. But overall, the air is too dry, not enough lift or upper-level support to produce rainfall with this system. And then you can see as we get into Thursday, still remaining fairly dry. Your forecast for tonight. Ames, 57 degrees under mostly clear skies, winds pretty much light and variable, and then as we get into the day tomorrow, we're going to make it up into the 80s with southerly winds through the early afternoon hours before that cold front, and then as the cold front comes through, our winds will shift to the north at around 10 to 15 miles per hour, and again, a few clouds with that, but overall, no precipitation expected. Hourly temperature forecast, you can see the temperatures warming up into the upper 70s as we get into the mid to late morning hours and early afternoon. We will peak during the early to mid afternoon hours and then temperatures fall tomorrow evening behind that cold front back into the 60s. So we will be a couple of degrees above normal for tomorrow. Here's a look at your extended outlook now for Iowa State University in the Ames area. Notice how we are much cooler as we get into Thursday and Friday. Friday, we're going to struggle to make it out of the 60s with overnight lows Friday night and Saturday morning into the 40s. We'll also be down into the upper 40s Sunday morning, but notice how we see a quick rebound as we get into Sunday afternoon and then a low chance for a few showers and storms as a front approaches the region. You're now up to date with the latest forecast here on Size Eyes on the Skies. Let's take another look at tonight's trivia question. What happens if a Greek letter storm needs to be retired? A. The World Meteorological Organization skips that letter in future storms. B. The WMO give the storm a name after the fact and retire that name. C. The WMO continue to use that letter as necessary, but make note of the letter in year it was retired. Or D. No one knows. Let's see what our viewers have to say. Looks like no one picked A, but 62% of you said D, that, that no one knows. And the correct answer is actually both C and D because this has never happened and a deal with it as we get there has been an issue for now. 
But a Washington Post article said that the WMO is planning on noting the storm letter and year to be retired, but continue to use it. That's all for this edition of Size Eyes on the Skies. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And you can find every show on our Size Eyes YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next Tuesday.